Hello everyone and welcome back to Wonderland Explorers. Today we're here in Asheville, North Carolina on the Biltmore Estates. After all these vlogs, little did you know, we were the real life Richie Rich. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Biltmore is filled with tons of history. We love this place. We would come here all the time when we were living in Tennessee, like all the time. We were pass holders. We love this place. We would tour it. We'd come here for every season, see, see the leaves change, the Christmas tree go up. This place is just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing to be back here. We can't wait to share this time with you. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Come along with us as we explore. All right, so first up for the day, we're gonna enjoy some breakfast and we come to the spot that not only locals, but definitely tourists flock to from all over for breakfast. Yes, and this is called Biscuit Head. Yeah. When you come here, come early if you can. If not, you're still okay. Yeah. But they have some outstanding biscuits. The line is always long, yeah. but it moves fast. It does move really fast. So if you pull in and you're like, uh, that looks a little bit long, I have plans. It, make sure <laughs> to check, because usually it's only about like 10 to 20 minutes tops. Yeah. Even though the line is like wrapping around the building because they process, they, like people just roll in and out so quickly. Yeah, but they're yeah. very fast and very quick. So definitely try it out. Don't get panicked or freaked out by the line. Yeah, but what is Biscuit? head so it, it is very much like the name implies it's a biscuit company they specialize in southern style biscuits breakfast lunch the, di the, the biscuits at the center of it all yeah really delicious stuff it was actually featured in Bon Appetit the New York Times it's been in a bunch of publications over the years you know it's gonna be good let's go in there and check it out So when you walk in there, it's very cute. It's very Southern, of course. And you're in the mountains, so they have a lot of these different themings going on. But if you look at their clothes, like up close, there's a lot of different cats. And it is called Biscuit Head. And it's because of the type of biscuit that it is. It is a cat head biscuit. What the heck is that? It just means that it's not a smooth biscuit. It kind of has like some rough and texture at the top and it's very big does not take away the flavor though. It is so big, delicious, and wonderful. Ugh, any sandwich or just the biscuits and gravy on its own, you're going to love it. So they offer multiple options here. You can either get it to go or you can eat inside. They also offer outdoor seating just underneath the uh, like enclosed porchway, which is kind of nice. So depending on, you know, if it's a beautiful time of the year or if you just don't quite want to sit back inside yet, they have you covered, which is pretty good. Yeah. But they have a huge menu. They, there's, they lots to, there's lots to select. This is a breakfast, and it's like a modern twist on a breakfast and a brunch. Yep. Tell them what you went with. So I went with a sandwich called the Filthy Animal. Which oh, sounds you filthy animal. Filthy animal. You can't, <laughs> you can't beat that. I like that. Uh, it was so, so good. It's a uh, fried chicken with the cat's head biscuit. It had like pimento cheese on there, bacon, gravy. Oh my gosh. Like it was so delicious it was a five out of five like the gravy was perfect i don't even care for biscuits even though shanae and i have been together for what 12 years now <laughs> i've tried to grow into liking them these biscuits were so good it's just they're buttery they're delicious they have like a little crunch to them at times and that gravy whew, if you like southern gravy this is some of the best i've had it's really really good i went with the country ham biscuit um, the gravy on this one is a little different. It had a red eye gravy. Now in this restaurant, they have like, I think six different types of gravy. Yeah. So it depends on what you want. Now I would say if you've never tried gravy, you may want to get it on the, the side. Yeah, absolutely. You know, cause you, it may not be your thing. I like the thicker gravy. So if I was to order my biscuit again, it came with a red eye gravy, which is like 
it's, it's water texture, you know, it's, but it has so much flavor. Yep. But it's a little bit more on the salty side, where like the sausage gravy, the vegetarian gravy, they have a mushroom gravy. Those are gonna be a little bit more thicker. Yeah. And I like that personally. But on my biscuit, it was a cat head biscuit, a big slice of cheddar cheese, which was delicious, <laughs> a country ham, an egg, and a fried green tomato. Now, if you've never had southern country ham, it is salty. Yeah, I it mean, is. extreme <laughs> salt. So if it's you don't like salt, do not get that biscuit. Yeah. And I mean like, oh, you're like, oh, maybe it's just a little salty. No, I mean like you're drinking gallons of water for the rest of the day. <laughs> it is so salty, but it's so good. So that's what I went with. I would give my biscuit a five out of five. If I had to change anything about mine, would again, would be just the gravy part. Yeah. But it was still good. It's yeah. still good. We also got a side of home fries. So there's yeah. a bunch of sides you can pick from. You can get like extra bacon if you wanted to. And then they have like loaded uh, home fries, regular yeah. home fries. We just got like a small side of the regular they were really good too I but think I, I think I could yeah I tried I tried a few very tasty again like those were absolutely fantastic but I would probably say you don't need them just no. because you get like the plates like the biscuits are so huge it's it's more than you can really work through now they they offer a bunch of coffees as well so mm -hmm. if you're a coffee fan they have lots of specialty lattes they have coffee uh, from local roasters offered so if you just want black coffee as well that's there mm -hmm. it's fantastic and then on top of all of that they have a huge selection of merch and then mm -hmm. also jam so before I talk about the the, the merch we should talk <gasps> about the jam there's a jam bar I forgot like, all about this. It's jam amazing. Box. So you can you can try all these different jams that they make here in the house. Oh. And like so we tried um, what was it, the chocolate potato chip butter. We tried apple pie, berry bomb, strawberry, and uh, then what was the other one? Peach rosemary. Peach rosemary. Oh my gosh. Like that chocolate potato chip like yeah I, there was three left inside like the little bar when i took it i'm like this has to be pretty good it was fantastic i think the one i liked the most was apple pie it oh, tasted yeah, like dessert good. like it tasted like an apple pie just like it said awesome like so so good and the berry bomb was really tasty that was my favorite i like the berry bomb and it actually has like real blueberries in there which yeah. is so good and i like the uh, peach rosemary that was really good i didn't too. know how it would be about that one but i really like oh no wait i like the strawberry too <laughs> wait 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 i normally not I, I like grape jelly you know if you had to go buy it at the store yeah but this strawberry jelly was really good too oh my gosh we're just going on and on and on like it's 15 a great place. minutes about this place yeah. but if you're here it's in between downtown and biltmore, biltmore, biltmore yeah right you're, there. you're really close to biltmore village yeah. and like if you liked any of these things like they have uh they have t-shirts and hats and of course if you like the jam you can buy jam to take home with you it's a good mm -hmm. size jar it was like seven, seven bucks yeah. we got a couple for family it's just really good. So now that we've gotten breakfast, <sighs> we're gonna make our way over to the Biltmore because that's what a lot of people do when they come to Asheville. You gotta go visit the Biltmore Mansion. Yeah. We would say it's a it's a long day. So make sure you get a good breakfast in you. Biscuit Head's a fantastic place <laughs> to start off your day at Asheville, day at Biltmore. We gotta head over to, gotta go see the Vanderbilts. We do. <laughs> just made our way to the ticket center which is just after the main entrance here at Biltmore guess what we're annual pass holders again this is super exciting for us it was the best deal at least for uh, for us and because yeah, we were annual pass holders before yeah it's very simple very easy but hey if you're coming here and just want a one-day ticket they definitely have those there's lots of experiences to do um, if you like like your stay and you plan on coming more than maybe a couple of times I would recommend doing the annual pass just yeah. because I think it's the better deal. They also tend to fluctuate throughout the year. So depending on when you're coming, check the, the ticket prices. Sometimes if you come in the uh, the low season, it's gonna be a little bit less, which is a pretty reasonable deal. And we tended to do that a lot too. Like right now it's the summer, but we would come here in the middle of the winter, the fall, the spring. Like we when we were living in Tennessee, we absolutely loved coming here to Biltmore. Plus there's just tons of experiences that you can do here that are also included and not included, premium experiences, something like falconry. And then they even have, uh, uh, what was it, the Monet exhibit going on too. They do, yeah. yeah. And that's another good point that you made out. Like 
every season there is a changing of like the art that they have here um, the exhibits that they show in the house that are included with your ticket there's also like separate ticketed events I mean there's so much here that I don't think that like you realize is a part of Biltmore carriage rides horseback riding fishing canoeing guided tours you could ride in a vehicle and do guided tours i mean there's so much to do you can find out all of that online yep. but i know it can get a little confusing as well so you can also check it out here at the ticket center and they're more than happy to help you absolutely some things have changed here at biltmore and they require reservations so if you want to go to the house do a tour there you have to book that in advance we also found out today that the wine experience even changed so you have to book your free wine tasting. So lots of lots of things are changing here at Biltmore, but you know what, no matter what, a day at Biltmore is always a good time. And for today, we're gonna check out the grounds. So we're gonna be going to the, uh, the gardens, we're gonna be checking out the shopping area, maybe even getting a little bit of wine. It's gonna be lots of fun. So now from here, we're gonna make our way up the approach road, which is the primary road used to get to the Biltmore estate. It's an absolutely beautiful drive. It's sculpted out of the land by Frederick Law Olmsted. So if you've never heard of Frederick Olmsted, he is actually the landscape architect who designed Central Park. He's done things for Stanford University. He's a legendary architect, designed this whole estate, 125,000 original acres, all curated, designed by Olmsted. It's impressive. So just looking at trees, they were thoughtfully placed there by a landscape ar architect over 100 and some years ago. It's just it's just awesome. So let's let's start heading up that way and get to these gardens. So the Billmore Estate is huge. So when you go to the ticket center and you get your tickets, plan in like 45 minutes to an hour before you actually have your house visit. Why? Because I'll show you. Here is the ticketing center. So that's where we came through the gates. We drove to the ticket center, which isn't very bad. But then you have this long approaching before you hit the parking lots. A and B is like a walking distance to the house. C, D, and E, you have a trolley that will pick you up and take you to the home and drop you off at the front door. But this is a long, beautiful way, which Kyle will tell you a little bit more detail of how they designed that actually to get to the home. So that's why I say leave some time in there before you buy your ticket in your reservation for the home. up here from the ticket center it was absolutely beautiful and it was specifically designed by Frederick Olmsted to be the approach road so this is the road you'll take that's winding and lined with beautiful vegetation all the way up to the Biltmore house now th some things have changed uh, over time specifically today there's lots of there's parking lots up here but bear in mind that this road itself has not changed very much you'll notice that there's no sharp edges meaning that the road meets the landscape so everything basically flows and moves harmoniously as you're moving your way up towards the house. Now, you'll also, you may have noticed that there's lots of different like uh, um, uh, tiers of plants. So the, he purposely laid uh, plants to be from low to high to not only just play off with light, but also to play off the time of the year. So anytime you come to the Biltmore Estate, there will also, there will always be like really beautiful vegetation growing along the approach road. It will never really look barren. You'll also notice that you'll never really be able to see very far. Again, that's all on purpose. He wants you to be in the moment, taking in this wonderful approach road, seeing all the plants as you wind your way up towards the house. It really does 
start to build. So you'll notice that the, the longer you drive up the road, the more like windy it gets and, and the more like, I wouldn't say necessarily exotic, but there is a mix of exotic and hardy plants and also the depth and range of plants that make things more picturesque, leading up to the point where you'll see the Biltmore House. So the approach road was really to show off Olmsted's architectural skills, but also, like I said, to build up to the moment that you rounded the corner and you finally saw dramatically the largest privately owned estate in all of the US. Take a look. <laughs> I don't think you need to say anything else. Just like, look at how beautiful that is. All right, so I, I won't fill everything with like dry history. We'll have a little bit of fun. As most of you guys know, Richie Rich was actually filmed here with Macaulay Culkin back in the 90s. Where I'm standing right now is where they filmed the scene, the baseball scene. So where Richie Rich is playing the, uh, the staff, the house staff, we're standing there right now. So like there was the pitcher, you had the outfielders, and just over there to the left was where the cook fell into the fountain later on in the scene. But yeah, it's all right here, right at Biltmore House. That's it. Nice hit, Richie. Oh. It's always so impressive to be here. Like, I, I, I just couldn't imagine what this place must have been like back in the early 1900s when folks were coming here and visiting and just taking in this mountain air. And this was, the, this was their summer home. This wasn't even their full-time home. Imagine that, I'm just saying. Imagine this being your summer house. Like, oh yeah, you know, it's just the biggest house in the country, but I just go there for, uh, for a few months in the summer just to get out of New York City. Just to give you a brief history on the property itself and the building, the Billmore is a chateau-esque style building and architecture. It's made by Richard Morris Hunt, was the primary architect of the building, and it was a feat of engineering. If you're an architect or an engineer, I would highly advise you to take the engineer's tour. They take you down to the basement. You can see the foundation for this place. It is insane. I've never seen anything like that. I mean, it's, it's a must do for any other engineers out there. Now, I will say, that the collection of artwork and just the architectural inspiration for this building, my gosh, like George Vanderbilt II, whew, I mean, this guy, he spared no expense. And even the decorations, it's one thing to build the biggest home, one of the most beautiful homes. It's another thing to furnish it. This guy, he knocked it out of the park and then have the landscape architecture on top of it from Olmsted. Now, obviously, George Vanderbilt, the Vanderbilt family, lived in Staten Island, New York, had mansions throughout New York City back in the day. They came down here in the summer. This was his summer house. So this is gonna be a two-part video because I think if you're coming here and you're planning things out, you kinda of need to plan out two days. Could you do it in one? Yes, but to really soak it in and enjoy what the property has, I would suggest doing it in two. The first part today, we're gonna to actually be going and doing the garden area, the grounds. And then tomorrow, we're gonna go in and explore the house. Hello everyone and welcome to the Garden and Trails Tour. Our first stop today is going to be at the library in South Terraces. What beautiful views they offer. George Vanderbilt was an avid reader and we're standing just outside of his library on the terrace. It's covered by these beautiful vines and I have to tell you it is so cool here. For it not having air conditioning back in the day you can see why they designed things the way that they did. There's so much air flow right here. You can just picture coming out here with a book. It's a hot afternoon just enjoying yourself. Soaking in these uh, these mountain views and the and the wind cooling down, it, it's just incredible. Making our way down from the library terrace, we're enjoying this wonderful space. Clearly built and designed for entertainment, cooling down, hosting parties, having a lot of fun. Just behind me, you'll notice what looks like a gazebo. This was actually used for breakfast and for teas. Ladies would go out there in their very heavy dresses and try to cool down. <laughs> but now today, it's, it's kind of fascinating, you know, it's funny how time moves on, but right behind me, Biltmore actually hosts summer concert series, so make sure to check that out too. You might be here, there could be a headliner act coming, putting on a concert, and you'll see it right here in the Biltmore 
will be the backdrop. It's so cool. I just wanted to just take a minute and show you the beautiful views that they enjoyed from the house and then also from this terrace point view. You have the rolling hills behind you. They're so soft and beautiful. And then in the distance, you have the mountaintops kissing the sky. It is so beautiful. And they continue to roll as far as your eyes can see. Now, right now we're in the summer season, so it's very plush and green and blue. In the fall, you get more of those rustic colors, and it's absolutely beautiful. And then you're like, oh, it's winter, everything's dead. No, it's still another beautiful view. It's like snow-topped, kissed mountains. And if you see the scene, it's still very green throughout the view. And no matter when you come, you're definitely going to enjoy this view. So behind me we have the beautiful Italian gardens. There's three huge koi ponds within this section that are absolutely beautiful. This was a garden intended for reflection and its lawns actually held croquet matches. So let's go take a closer look. George Vanderbilt did have a passion for art, especially Impressionism. So, of course, with the art exhibit that they're hosting for that season, they're going to roll it out into the gardens as well because this is an absolutely beautiful area. The art exhibit that's happening now is Monet, and so they recreated the painting of water lilies right here. So we just left the Italian gardens and we now found ourselves under these beautiful trellises covered with wisteria. Again, it's like, it's just so cool and calm. You could just picture somebody spending hours here reflecting and maybe going for like a casual stroll. I mean, this is so beautiful. Like you could even picture like someone getting married underneath here. It's just gorgeous. just can't get over some of the trees and vegetation that you find here. Right behind me, this Japanese maple. I know throughout the years, my family, we've had several. And they've gotten pretty big. I've never seen one that's exactly like this. I mean, this is like the size of a Buick, you know? <laughs> it's impressive, man. I just, my goodness, who would have thought? I mean, when Olmsted designed all this, I know, you know, everything was planned methodically, but my goodness, I mean, if those guys could see what this place looks like today, it's just gorgeous. Behind me is the shrub garden. And in this little section, there's over 500 different species of shrubs in this area. 500, can you imagine? In your garden. 500, they have nothing on us. You know, we, yeah. were, we were talking about that. I think Let's we have- Let's count ours. One, yeah. One two, two, three. Three. I think three. <laughs> <laughs> Before we head to the Walden Garden behind me, the Rose Garden, the Conservatory, I'm going to go ahead and list all of the 500 types of bushes, starting with... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Would you be like, I'm out. I am out. Fast forward. Fast forward. No. But we're, as we were saying, as you're strolling through, you just get these wafts of scents, and it's absolutely amazing. <sighs> well, as you can tell, we still have a lot more to explore. We are finding ourselves now in the walled garden. This is the formal garden for the estate and by far the most exceptional display of gardening skill, I, I would say, 
and across the entire property. So in the fall, they'll have mums. Summertime features annuals. And in the spring, beautiful tulips. Right now, we have many different flowers on display. I mean, my gosh, it is so gorgeous. And not just beautiful scenery for us here. This is, this is a spot that holds a very special place in our heart. This is actually where I proposed to Shanae. <laughs> So this, this garden has a very, very, very special meaning to us. It's, it's beautiful. Okay, so we made it to the wall garden just below that before you hit the conservatory you have the rose garden and there's every different type of rose in here it's absolutely beautiful as well as scented and this is where our special moment happened when kyle did propose where it's right behind me i tell you each of these sections it just builds up just like the moment it was a beautiful period we'll go ahead and show you Well, this is it. This is the, the rose garden trellis. It's where it all happened. Special moments. It's where it all started. Memories made. Where we signed our lives away. What were we thinking? <laughs> Just kidding. Taking a moment to cool down. Yes. So as you find yourself walking through the gardens, you're like, oh my goodness, if you didn't bring a bottle of water with you, you don't have to go all the way back up to the top no. and get a drink. They do have a little like stand Con depending on the season. Cons conservatory cafe. Yes. It's right behind the conservatory. Yep. And depending on what season is a change in beverage, but you can get an, your adult beverage of wine, of mm, course. Of course. But you can also get like teas and lemonades or a mixture that's what we got and i was like give me a large because i told you that country ham comes into play and so i needed it but look at these cups i feel like i'm at disney and i'm like wait a minute is this extra is this like 15 dollars for the cup <laughs> no but we got two drink large and they're like 10 dollars, so yeah. it's reasonably priced here N nice solid arnold palmer for, yeah. for a hot summer day but in the winter they serve like hot chocolate or yeah. fall hot it's cocoa really nice. and warm spice drinks so this is a great place to kind of take a break cool down for a little bit before you actually move into the conservatory yeah. because it's spicy in there it does get a little spicy the conservatory is open year round yes and what's interesting about this building is that it's still very much functional today as it was when George Vanderbilt lived here. They would kind of cycle plants in and out of this building. So they would bring plants from the conservatory up to the main house and back and forth. And that's how they would, you know, kind of help furnish the house with live vegetation throughout the year. And of course, it is massive, just like the houses. Our house isn't this big. I think it's like a fraction of it, but anyway. <laughs> but there's awesome. There's, there's some really awesome rooms in here. Our favorite's the Palm Room. Mm -hmm. In a second, let's head in. We'll check it all out. It's it's amazing. Entering the conservatory on the far side, we decided to come into the orchid room, which is absolutely beautiful. It has all different types and colors of orchids. They're so pretty. And again, everything is floor to ceiling. So they try to stage this to be as full and as pretty as possible. And I mean, you'll see some exotic things in here, but next up, I cannot wait to head into this palm room. You're gonna love this. And look at the scale of this palm room. My gosh, there's all different heights of palms. There's even succulents in here. Lots of different flowering plants. Again, it's so beautiful. And this is open during the winter too. We used to love coming in here during the winter months when it would be so cold outside. It's just like, oh, I'm in my tropical oasis. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome. It Stepping into the cool house, I kind of feel like I'm in the jungle cruise right now. Lots of big leafy green plants dangling down. You got some nice tropical colors in here as well. Again, just a really beautiful greenhouse to check out. One thing that we noticed is that during the spring and summer months, particularly summer, they'll actually line the outside of the greenhouse around the conservatory cafe with more plants. So this is, this is an outdoor space. I mean, this is chock full. During the winter, fall months, they kind of pull all this stuff back. You're not going to see this out here. So it really is a magical and fun time to come to the conservatory here at Biltmore during the spring and summer months.
finding another seasonal display. This almost looks like a like a tiki bed. Again, what's the get the jungle cruise theme going on here? <laughs> Making our way through the hot house. This is a tropical experience for sure. Lots of beautiful flowers in here, fuchsias, coral colors, just so pretty. You can spend hours in this greenhouse. I mean, the whole conservatory. It's so much fun. It makes you kind of feel like a kid at heart. You're just exploring all of this fun stuff. As you make your way to the back of the conservatory, this is where we were talking about. You could come sit, have a drink. A lot of people think this is it, but underneath this little section is a little garden shop. You can buy plants that are actually grown here at the Biltmore. You have pots, you have things for your garden. It's a fun touch and a great idea to bring a little bit of Biltmore home. So let's go check it out. As I was saying, when you come down here to this section, they have a little bit of everything for your garden at home. From the art pieces, to benches, to pots, to plants that are actually grown here at the Biltmore. So if the Biltmore Gardens have inspired you and you want to go home and be creative, you can. And you can start right here. Stop. Stop the presses. Stop the presses. Biltmore is following Disney. We have Biltmore Spirit Jersey. This is hilarious. Biltmore this is legit balloons. Spirit Jersey. This is like the Flower and Garden Festival right here. But hold and on, the, that's not it. Oh, you know. You know some of our other vlogs. Biltmore Lounge Flies. <laughs> if you're looking to take something home that's very unique to Biltmore, come here to the garden shop. They have a very particular plant that they bred right here at Biltmore called the Biltmore Bell. It's a really pretty shrub. These grow to be rather large. Now you can prune them and keep them a little smaller, but this is a, this is basically an abutilon. So if you're familiar with those plants, it's a tropical shrub. They're absolutely gorgeous. And look at the colors that this flower per, uh, actually creates. It's so elegant. Making our way out of the conservatory and back through the walled garden, I'm stopping in front of the gardener's house. This was actually a cottage. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's beautiful, it's huge. It's got that wonderful terracotta roof that everybody loves on there. He was actually one of the first residents here at Biltmore, so he moved in and started taking care of things before the Vanderbilts even arrived. It's kind of fascinating though, but oh my gosh, I wouldn't even live here. This is, this is beautiful. We're gonna now make our way back to the car, drive through the property, <laughs> enjoy the rest of the grounds that way. I think, word of advice, Go to the conservatory and just stop. If you don't park back by the conservatory, just make your way back to your car and start driving through the rest of the grounds for your first trip here. That way you can kind of take in the property because mm -hmm. it's a lot. If you're not used to this, you've got a lot of uphill and downhill walking. You do. It can be very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And also it could be really hot and exhausting depending on the time of the year. So I would suggest just kind of stopping here go get the car, drive the rest, and you'll get to go by the river. Yeah. It's so pretty. Let's go check it out. Hello and welcome to Sinead's Biltmore Garden Estate Tour. We'll be driving through the gardens. If you have any questions, just keep them to yourself. I'm gonna be quiet so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the tour. yourself thinking oh my goodness I should have bought that Abutilon but I don't want to walk through the gardens and get them well don't you worry the Billmore Estates has built a parking lot here just for you where you can come and park and head back in and buy that Abutilon all right folks now we're heading a little bit further out away from the wall garden this is how you would travel away from the Biltmore house and make your way down to the town center where you'll find delicious wines and treats and restaurants as well. On along this drive in this way, there's different trails that you can stop and park, um, or you can just drive right through it. 
we pulled over to show you guys the bass pond because of course George Vanderbilt has many things a bass pond being one of them this was privately stocked they'd come down here they'd fish anytime they wanted to and this was kind of unique because just down the road here he has the French Broad River which they could go over there and fly fish for trout and other species like this is just so beautiful and then the other side over here it is own private waterfall and there's the waterfall it's it's just so beautiful here. Everything is so peaceful and calming. And you know what? If you want to get away from the Biltmore House, you can actually come down here and they have hiking trails. They call them the woodland trails and they will lead up to the house. So you can spend the day literally just roaming the, the grounds, not necessarily the gardens, taking in all of this beautiful, more natural looking nature, waterfalls, ponds. You can't fish in the ponds, so that's important to know. Don't, don't bring your fishing poles, you will, get, you will get in trouble. You will not be able to fish here. Now, if you do want to take like guided uh, fly fishing excursions, they do offer those separately. Well, everyone, we've now found ourselves down on the wonderful shores of the French Broad River. It's, it's bubbling, it's babbling. It's doing all these wonderful things in the background. There's even team building exercises going on. <laughs> As they raft along the river. There's also kayak tours. This is also where you'll do your horseback riding if you have a bicycle and you want to ride it or you want to go for a run or a walk. Ooh, there's just there, so, there's much so much that they offer here. There's so much. You even see couples just coming over here and like having a picnic and sitting yes. down. Like you can you can just tell if you live here mm -hmm. or you know and you want to have a relaxing weekend, whatever you want to do, Biltmore Estate has a lot for you. And the grounds tour is a lot to take in and of itself. We haven't even taken you to the house yet. No, and yeah. also along the property, they also have a little town square at the inn where they host so many yeah. things as well. They even have a convention center that you can go to yep. where they house rolling exhibits as well. Yeah. They even have a farm where they have petting zoos. That's what I'm saying. So like much. You could go on and on and on. So there is definitely a lot to do here. There's even hotels you can stay. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah, but I think we're gonna call it it for today. We just wanted to touch on the gardens yeah. to show you in this in this vlog. Yeah, well, we hope you guys did enjoy that. You saw some breakfast. You saw the grounds, the gardens. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Obviously, as we were saying, there's so much stuff to do when you come here. Yes. It's definitely worth the trip. It's worth the visit. It's fantastic, and you can't you can't beat the people, the history, and everything about it. And so, if you like the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. And as always, till next time, friends. Bye. bye.